Hello everyone, hope you are well. Jules here for What Culture Gaming, and I don't know about you, but when I think of the most successful video games, I often think of them in relation to how impressive or impactful their enemies are. Mario and Bowser is the immediate one that springs to mind, Link and Ganon is another, but there are countless other video games almost defined by their big baddies. I mean, Borderlands 2 and Handsome Jack is just another personal favourite. Yet, as with the writing staff here at What Culture, not everyone is born of equal skill. I'm looking at you, Josh. And so for every big bad, there's just a ton of enemies that are just, well, plain bad. So let's have a laugh at some of these losers here today. I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are the 10 most hilariously useless enemies in gaming history. Number 10. Thugs. Superhero games. If I lived in a world where superheroes actually existed, there are two jobs I would definitely not want to have. An insurance firm accountant and a low-level thug or goon. Now, working for some villain might have some immediate perks, like a bit of spare avocado money on the weekend, but it's not worth getting my face booted inside out from one Peter Parker or Juicy Bruce Wayne. And I know what you might be thinking, well, at least in those games superheroes don't kill people, but I would like to offer the following story. I broke my hand once. It was agony. And adding to that a broken jaw, leg, arms and back would probably be a thing that I wouldn't even wish on my worst enemy. Plus, it's not exactly fair, right? I mean, a few weekend classes of judo down the local leisure centre versus years of training gadgets and super strength? No thanks, I'll see myself out. Number 9. Archers, Shadow of Mordor God bless archers in video games. They certainly try to be a threat, but when you're going up against, say, I don't know, a mythical warrior who can phase in and out of reality, leap up buildings and regenerate health in an instant, then I don't think a sharpened twig is going to do much use. Now, the regular orcs in the game can and have served Talion's ass back to him on a silver platter, making excellent use of the game's nemesis system, but the archers? Oh dear. Might as well throw yourself off this ledge, mate, as you're about as threatening to me as a sponge bath. It actually creates scenes where picking off the archers before engaging in a ground fight becomes such a chore that many don't even bother. Imagine that, just standing up there watching your mates getting their chins knocked off and thinking, oh bloody hell, I hope he doesn't see me. Bless him. Number 8. Puke Piles, Earthbound. Earthbound is such a phenomenal game that it's honestly a crime that it doesn't come up in our videos more. I personally blame the fact that the majority of the gaming team here isn't old enough to have basic object permanence, let alone memories of this gem, but I will rectify that now. Because it won't stop me from talking about a different set of pukes, see what I did there, just put down my co-workers again, which you can find in this game. Yes, that's right, in a title where almost everyone and everything has been morphed into enemies of all shapes and sizes, it seems that even lowly piles of vomit have been reinvigorated as, well, piles of vomit but with angry eyes this time. They are about as challenging as a straight line maze and you'll be scraping them off your shoes in no time. They exist only to slow you down, and while the game does present two of them as different bosses, this can't make up for the fact that in the hierarchy of evil, these guys are definitely at the bottom. Number 7. Anyone in your way. All the LEGO games. As you probably expect from a game series that's aimed at a younger audience, enemies in the LEGO games aren't exactly very threatening. Sure, they could be the size of a house or act all mean and stompy, but at best you'll just lose maybe one heart from their attacks, and even if you do succumb to their flailings, you'll be out of the box pack fresh to give them a good rollicking in a few seconds. And if you're playing on one player, it's even easier, as you'll spirit jump over to the other character while your blocky buddy builds themselves back up again, meaning that you are literally unstoppable. Now in real life, stepping on a Lego brick is more painful than your mum's attempts to secure a second date with this centaur of a man, but here? Well, they're the only things that are going to get stepped on. And by the way, no prizes for guessing which half of me is horse. That's right, it's my face as I've got a lot of teeth. Anyway, I'm not returning our calls, and also, that's my one per list. Maybe we could look at this as the player being overpowered, but for the purposes of this list, we're just going to be thinking of, well, if you're a bad guy in a Lego game, you might as well give up now. Number 6. Bats, Legend of Zelda Bats in the Legend of Zelda games are absolutely pathetic. They swoop down with all the vicious intent of a marshmallow and they bounce off you like you've irreparably damaged them without doing a thing. 
Now, I understand that they're probably acting out of a survival instinct in order to drive you off, but you know what? Listen, mate, if you didn't come down here and try and have a suck on my bonce, then I wouldn't have to Z-target you off the face of the earth. Plus, at the end of the day, I'm not exactly rustling through your nest for the one or two rupees that I might find, so do yourself a favour and keep your flying rodent self to yourself. Ineffective, not even worth robbing, annoying screeching noises, it is like my dating app profile all over again. Number 5. Goombas – Super Mario World The life of a Goomba must be a horrifying and rather boring one. Either you live long enough to see your friends absolutely smashed by a fat Italian dude, his brother, or any one of his mates, or you simply walk towards and then off a cliff because you have no concept of turning around nor sense of self-preservation. Now, outside of the game, at some point in the development process, it was decided that the Koopa Troopers were too much of an early challenge to the player, and so another enemy was needed. An easier enemy. One that would offer the least possible path of resistance to the player. Therefore, is it any wonder that the Goomba, while being utterly iconic, is absolutely useless when it comes to being an enemy? While they've been given wings, been made gold, and even blown up to huge sizes, Goombas remain the same. An easy enemy which would make you the laughing stock of the world should you actually die to one. Number 4. Basic Soldiers – The Dynasty Warriors Series The Dynasty Warriors franchise does two things very, very well. Retelling the romance of the Three Kingdoms, seeing as that's all it ever bloody does, each and every time, and also how it portrays the monumental power that each of these legendary warriors possessed. You'll see boulders cleaved in two, entire fleets of ships go up in flame, and even the often quoted, power of my magic. So what do you think you and your mates, armed with a toothpick and wearing what is effectively a coloured bath mat as armour, are going to be able to do to stop this guy. Not much is the answer. As one of these figures of myths, you can decimate entire armies with a few simple swings, and while the regular grunts manage to outnumber the player 100 to 1 on a bad day, they graciously wait their turn and circle around you with all the intent of a snail. Now, I don't blame them for not wanting to tangle with a man riding a fire-breathing horse, but come on guys, at least try a bit harder. Number 3. Wolves Skyrim, Tomb Raider, Red Dead Redemption 2 Wolves are by no means exclusive to the games I've just mentioned here, but they are good examples of where they've been absolutely pathetic, because even though they've become an established staple of the enemy RPG roster, they've not exactly done much to prove their worth. Now, in real life, I'd want to stay well clear from these leery lupines, seeing as I don't fancy becoming a chew toy. However, in video games, they're a bit of a pushover more often than not. Now, Sif is an exception to this rule, but he has the benefit of being absolutely massive and carrying a sword in his gob. The rest of his kin seem instead to come across as weak, ineffective, and more of a nuisance than anything. It also doesn't help that they love to announce their arrival with long howls, foregoing any element of surprise that they might have had, which again is what wolves would do in real life. Now, I hate violence against animals, I really do, but when they're this useless, you might as well teach them to play dead. Number 2. Bloatflies – Fallout Bloatflies tick two huge boxes when it comes to being a rubbish enemy. One, they are ugly as all sin, and two, they are about as effective as the dung pile that they are hovering around. If you spot one of these weighty bastards, then it's not even a case of thinking of what to do next, as they pose such little threat that your gun almost jumps from its holster and into your hand to put them out of their misery. It also doesn't help that they're absolutely massive, meaning that you'd need to almost try and miss, and that their attacks are like being hit with spitballs of the kind that you'd fire at school from an empty biro, and when you've got an enemy which is less threatening than a year 11 geography exam, you know you're a bit of a lost cause. Oh, and the legendary bloat fly can be a bit harder, so I'll cut him some slack, alright? And number one, grunts, Halo. These are the first enemies on this list where it's okay to be as pathetic as they are, as it's entirely part of their charm. The grunts in Halo are so beautifully stupid and ineffective that they're immediately iconic. Their attacks are dreadfully weak, their design is that of a stubby comic relief, and the animation of them running away like Kermit the Frog is one burned into the hearts of Master Chiefs all around the world. They drop dead dead quick and couldn't hit the earth itself, let alone the broad side of the barn that they're firing at, and yet you can't help but smirk when you see a fresh batch of them chittering away in the distance. It's a testament to the franchise that it can be so much fun killing something so painfully stupid and useless. 
And there we go, those were 10 of their most hilariously useless enemies in video games. Let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below as well as any others that you would add to this list because I might look to do a future commenters edition one and you might get a little cheeky shout out from this big bold bad boy here. As always, I've been Jules, you have been awesome, never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!